गौरंग गंधार्विक गिरधार श्री श्री राधा गोविंद जी की जय जय श्री जगन्नाथ बलदेव सुभद्रा सुदर्शन चक्र जीव की जय जय श्री जय श्री गिरिराज गोवर्धन की जय श्री श्री निताय गौरंग की जय श्री नृसिंग भगवान की जय जय श्री ए सी भक्ति विनांत स्वामी महाराज श्री प्रभुपाद की जय जय श्री भक्ति विदांत नारायण गोस्वामी महाराज की जय जय श्री भक्ति रक्षक श्रीधार गोस्वामी महाराज की जय इज इट लाउड एनफ हरी बोल इज इट लाउड एनफ लाउड एनफ देयर या और यू यूजुअली यूज दैट स्पीकर इफ यू वांट वी आल्सो नीड द अदर माइक Were you asking for last story? I didn't know. No, I was asking if it was loud enough. Oh, okay, okay. I think it's so. Hari bol, Hari bol. Jai Shri Lal Bhakti Pragyan Kesha Goswami Maharaj ki jai. Shri Lal Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur Shri Lal Bhopad ki jai. Jai Mahabhagwat Shri Lal Bhakti Kishor Das Goswami Maharaj ki jai. Shri Shri Lal Satyanand Lal Bhakti Vinod Thakur ki jai. वैष्णव सर्वंशी जगन्नाथ बाबा जी महाराज की जय जय श्री रूप अनुगा गुरु वर्ग की जय श्री रूप सनातन बतर मनाशी जी रूप पाल बतर दास रघुनाथ सर्वो स्वामी प्रभु की जय श्री स्वरूप दामोदर रॉय रमनंदारी गौर पार्षद वृंद की जय जय नमचार्य श्री हरिदास ठाकुर की जय प्रेम से कहो श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर शिवस आदि गौर भक्त वृंद की जय श्री श्री नवद्वीप धाम की जय श्री वृंदावन धाम की जय श्री श्री राधा कृष्ण गोप गोपी गो गोवर्धन द्वादश वनात्मक श्री ब्रह्मंडल धाम की जय श्याम कुंद राधा कुंद यमुना गंगा तुलसी भक्ति देवी की जय जय श्री जगन्नाथ बलदेव सुभद्र सुदर्शन चक्र जीव की जय श्री जगन्नाथ पुरी क्षेत्र धाम की जय जय श्री भक्ति विघ्न विनाश नृसिंह सिंह देव की जय भक्त प्रभु ऋषि कलाद महाराज की जय अनंत कोटि वैष्णव वृंद की जय समागत गौर भक्त वृंद की जय जय निताय गौर प्रेमानंदी वंदे हम श्री गुरु श्री जुदहा पद कमलम श्री गुरु वैष्णवाश्च श्री रूप सागर जात सहगन रघुनाथ तम सजीव साधवैत सवधूत परीजनासहित कृष्ण चैतन्य श्रीराधा कृष्ण पादान सहगना ललिता श्री विशाखा ओम अज्ञानतिमीरंद ज्ञानंजनशलाकया चक्षुरुन्मिल तस्म श्रीगुर नम मुखाचालंगायते यीपातम वंदे श्रीगुरोता वंशकूभ्य कृपा सिंधुभ्य पतिनाभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम नमो महाभजन्याय कृष्ण प्रेम हृदय ते कृष्णा कृष्ण चैतन्य नाने गौराचिषे नम हे कृष्ण करुणा सिंधो दीनबंधो जगत पथे गोपेश गोपीक कांता राधा कांत नमोस्तुते तप्त कांचन गौरांगी राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी वृषभानुसुते देवी 
Krishna Bhakti Prade Devi Satya Vajjai Namo Namaha Panchatat Patmakam Krishna Bhakta Rupa Swarupa Kam Bhakta Vataram Bhakta Kyam Namami Bhakta Shakti Kam Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shivas Adi Gaur Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. First of all, I offer my unlimited Dandavat pranams, my Shraddha Pushpanjali at the lotus feet of my most worshipable beloved Guru Dev, Nitya Lila Pravishta, Om Vishnu Pad Paramahansa, Asto Tarasata Sri Srila, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Maharaj, Srila Prabhupada. Then I offer my same unlimited Dandavat Pranams and my Shraddha Pushpanjali <coughs> at the lotus feet of my most worshipable beloved Siksha Guru Dev's Nitya Lila Pravishta Om Vishnu Pad Paramahamsa Astatara Sata Sri Srila Bhakti Rakshak Sri Tara Goswami Maharaj and Nitya Lila Pravishta Om Vishnu Pad Paramahamsa Astatara Sata Sri Srila <coughs> Bhakti Vedanta Narayana Goswami Maharaj and my Dandavat pranams to the lotus feet of all my Sri Sri Rupa Nuga Guru Varga and my dandavat pranams to all the Vaishnavas and all the Vaishnavas. So yesterday <coughs> we resumed our study of Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur, his book which is gone titled Bhakti Aloka but I don't think that he it was compiled together as a book other than by Iskan because it was separate articles in his magazine so but now it's included in Shiva Gurudev Shiva Bhaktivedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj's Upadesha Amrita that whole commentary because in Gurudev's comment, in Gurudev's version of Sri Upadesha Amrita, he has included three commentaries already for all 11 verses. One by Sri Radharaman Das Goswami, the second one by Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur, and the third one by Srila um, Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur. So we've, all, we've studied most of those verses. But then we began to we began to study this separate, which is an appendix in the book. You understand? So in this way, we have twelve more chapters that we've been studying, and uh, this is the second chapter from the end, uh, because there are six favorable activities for bhakti, and six unfavorable activities for bhakti. Have you studied Upadesha Amrita? Um, can't say. Huh? I probably haven't studied it properly. But, but have you read it? Uh, yeah. So you know that there's 11 verses, and the second and third verse are a list of six activities that are unfavorable for bhakti and six that are favorable. So we're going, with the help of Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur, we're going deeply into each one, uh, each one of those. Six and six, twelve. So, so what we're studying at this time is these, 
the fifth item in the favorable activities, which is what? In the unfavorable activities? In the favorable oh, activities. Favorable activities. Yes. Utsahan, oh, Nishayat, Dariyat, Tat Tat Karma, Pravartanat, Sangha Tyaga. Sangha Tyaga. Sangha Tyaga. And what is the general meaning of Sangha Tyaga? Giving up uh, bad association. Yes. Uh, we will go to the beginning here. Relinquishing mundane association. Now, in the unfavorable items, Atyahara, Prayasascha, Prajalpa, Niyamadraha, there's also one of the principles in that list which is relating to the same principle, Janasanga. Janasanga. It's also the fifth item in this list of six. Same with the, with the uh, favorable qualities that will enhance your bhakti. It's also the fifth item out of six. So if we really want to understand how to apply this, in our life, which is extremely important, extremely important, we can't even stress it enough, because without this there is no question of pure bhakti, no, no question. Even to come to the level of bhakti, which is somewhat mixed, you will have to endeavor. No? to follow the Upadesha Amrita. So, in Bhakti Vinod Thakur's song, O He Vaishnava Thakur, you know that song? What does it say? O He Vaishnava Thakur, Doyara Sagara, E Dase Karuna Kori, Diya Padachaya, Shodahe Amai, Tomara Charana Dori. Then, Chaya Vega Dami, Chaya Dosha Shodi, Chaya Guna Deva Dase, Chai Sat Sangha, Deho Heya Mari, Oseji Sangira Ase. So here Bhakti Vinod Thakur is showing us that in order to be successful in applying these principles of the Sri Upadesha Amrita, we will have to get the shelter of a Vaishnava Thakur. And a Vaishnava Thakur means someone who is on the highest platform, at least Madhyam Madhyam, uh, in that level. And through their uh, association, mercy, giving shelter of their lotus feet, then we can execute the process of, we can attempt to perform Shuddha Bhakti, you see. So, it's, it's very important that if a devotee is actually serious, uh, he wants to advance, then he has to examine himself. He has to take his pulse, you know, or put a thermometer in his mouth. Uh, he has to see, am I following? And to what extent am I following? Or am I not following? And to what extent am I not following? This is the basis. And, and we should understand that this Upadesha Amrita emanated from the lotus mouth of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. How important is that? In the, in the end of his pastimes in Sri Jagannath Puri, sitting on the sand after coming back from a very deep internal state and surrounded by his devotees, Srila Rupa Goswami was there. And he heard from Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's lotus mouth, the Upadesha Amrita, and later he uh, wrote the verses, the 11 shlokas. So it is the necklace. I mean, in the introduction, which we read in the beginning, this is a necklace to be worn constantly by the Vaishnavas. So each and every item in each and every one of these 11 verses is so, so essential. Therefore, he begins in the very beginning with four different groups of six items. The six Vega, 
What does Vega mean? Urges. Urges. The six urges. What are they? Vacha Vega. The urge to speak. We studied that item. Bhaktivinoda Thakur broke it down very clearly, very extensively. All different types uh, of inabilities. And what should one do? What kind of speech should one engage in? So these are all to be studied. Every single one of these items. Chaya Vegadami, Chai Dosha Shodhi. Chai Dosha Shodhi means uh, all of my faults, my six faults. Mm. Please purify my six faults. Then Chaya Guna Devodasi. Oh, please give to your servant the six favorable qualities. Chaya Guna. And then Chaya Satsanga. Give to me the six types of holy association. And there are six exchanges which should be done with the pure Vaishnavas. <clears throat> so in this way, we can begin the actual process of Vaidhi Bhakti. And gradually, through purification, we can become fortunate through Nam Bhajan, which comes in later verses, intensive Nam Bhajan, and coming into Braj, uh, living in Braj, becoming absorbed, then we can come into the pathway of Ragmark Bhakti. So, in the, when we read yesterday, the different types of detrimental association, which is called Kusanga. So I'm just reviewing it. Okay. Actually, what we should have is, we should have various charts. Because Bhaktivinoda Thakur breaks everything down very logically. Oh, there's two types of association, bad association. And then in the, in, there's two types in each one of those. So, just reviewing. There are two types of association. Two types of association. Sangha. That which is characterized by proximity. You're in the physical proximity. That's called samsarga. And the other is that characterized by attachment, asakti. So these two types of association are there. Now, the association characterized by proximity is of two types. That is with non-devotees, uh, to be in proximity with non-devotees and with women. In this case, for the devotees in the female bodies, it would apply to men. But we have to understand that deeply. So association, now the other type of association. The association characterized by attachment also is of two types. So you've got the association of proximity and have the association characterized by attachment. So what is that? Attachment to that for which one possesses samskaras. So what are samskaras? Impressions. Mm -hmm. So they can be uh, family affection, or if one was bound intimately to someone, there are impressions and memories of all that. Mm. And continuing attachment, possibly. Yeah. And is that from this life only? Mm. <laughs> yeah, some scars from previous life also. Uh, so, association characterized by attachment is also of two types. Attachment to that for which one possesses some scars, impressions in the heart, and attachment to material objects. Practitioners of bhakti should endeavor to give all these up. Now, the practitioners of bhakti should endeavor to give all these up. What will happen if one doesn't give all these up? He's also telling that here. What will be the result if he doesn't give these up? Well, then otherwise their gradual ruination is inevitable. Inevitable. If one doesn't give these up, 
So then he's quoting from the Bhagavad Gita, which we read yesterday, that one should always remember the following verses from the Bhagavad Gita. And it's the sequence of what? Lustless mm-hmm. anger by contemplation of yeah. an object of the senses, attachment mm-hmm. arises, attachment, attachment lust, no, mm-hmm. lust, anger, mm-hmm. anger uh, bewilderment. Oh, the mic you should. Oh. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yes. Sangat Sanjayate Kama. Kama Krodo Vijayate. Krodhat Bhavati Sammohat. Sammohat Smriti Vidrama. Smriti Brahmshad Budinasho Budinashad Pranashyati. So Bhakti Vinod Thakur is saying we should always remember these verses. This is how we will be able to gradually protect ourselves from Kusanga. Bad, a bad association, which is not helpful for us, which can be very destructive. And how, how will this enable us to protect ourselves? Here Bhaktivinoda Thakur is explaining. If a sadhak enters into association that is prohibited for the development of his bhakti, <clears throat> then his attachment to the objects of the senses will gradually increase. If he enters into that which is prohibited, all right, for the development of his bhakti, then his attachment to the objects of the senses will gradually increase. The more that this attachment increases, then the more his faith in the supreme goal is diminished. Attachment diminishes what? Faith in the supreme goal. That's a frightening thing. Yes. That's why it's very essential. The whole Bhagavad Gita is ultimately aiming at detachment, right? Give up all varieties of Dharma and just surrender to me, right? So ultimately, Bhagavad Gita, the last chapter that we were reading on the Gita Jayanti day, is Srila Prabhupada titled it The Perfection of Renunciation. And in the Sanskrit, it's called Sanyas Yoga. Now, this is not just for persons that are entering into the Sanyas Ashram. No, no, no. This is for every devotee. Attachment to material things diminishes our bhakti. And he's saying here, if a sadhak enters into association that is prohibited, Uh, for the development of his bhakti, then his attachment to the objects of the senses will gradually increase. Mm. And the more that this attachment increases, then the more his faith in the supreme goal is diminished. So, see, it's a guidebook. Oh, this is starting to happen? Oh, what am I doing wrong? This is happening in my life? I made this decision to do this, to do this. And now I'm getting a result that I can feel is not favorable for my bhakti. Oh, I better get back in the proper line, you see. The purport is that the living entity is spiritual. This is the basis of everything in bhakti yoga, is that we are actually spiritual entities, but now, but being shackled by Maya, he forgets his spiritual identity and then he adopts the conception of I and mine. Aham mama, aham mameti. And this is in relation, I and mine is in relation to temporary material objects, right? But in, in his pure state, the living entity has no relationship with Maya. Imagine that. No relationship. Really, when a very fortunate sadhak advances and gradually comes to the stage of ruchi, asakti, and bhav, especially, he has no identif- sense of identification with the temporary body, with anything related with the body. Hmm? Uh, and he's constantly engaged, 24 hours. 
We want to come to that point. It will have to be gradual. It cannot be sudden, all, all of a sudden overnight. And there are also gradual steps to be taken. That's why Varnashram also has this facility. But we should understand that we have not done this in only this one life. There have been previous lives endeavors. Otherwise, some, no one can come into the association of such pure Vaishnavas and this line of disciplic succession. Otherwise not. So, obviously, we've definitely made many, many mistakes on the pathway of bhakti in previous lives. But in this life, we become fortunate. And then we have the association of so many pure Vaishnavas, sincere Vaishnavas, this will bring us to these higher stages. Without that, you cannot go to the higher stages, isn't it? Without hearing regularly from realized Vaishnavas, if you're only reading on your own, it will be good, but it's not adequate. That's why there are five activities in the previous Tatat Karma Pravartana, when we studied that, there are five chief activities uh, that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, of all the 64 limbs of bhakti, there are five that are told to be so powerful that even by performing even one of them, one can attain Krishna Prem. What are those five? First one, Sadhu Sangha. First one, Sadhu Sangha. Second one, Nam Kirtan. Chanting Nam, Krishna Nam. Third one, Bhagavat Shravan, to hear Srimad Bhagavatam, but to hear it in the association and under the guidance of who? Rupa Goswami says, Rasikai Saha, Rasik Vaishnava. And, Srimad. Uh, Srimad Bhagavatarta Anam Asvado Rasikai Saha. Rupa Goswami has told that one must hear Srimad Bhagavatam and hear the deep understanding of it, the Artha. What is the real meaning of Srimad Bhagavatam? To go deep. Srimad Bhagavatarta Anam Asvado. Tasting. Tasting what? Rasikai Saha. Tasting the remnants of foodstuffs of Harikata from the mouth of the pure Vaishnava, uh, tasting his uh, experience of tasting rasa. As he speaks, that experience is coming from his lotus mouth. If we're so fortunate that we can be in their direct association and hearing, well, this is most important. Sadhu Sangha of that caliber. So, Asvado Rasikai Saha. So, Sadhu Sangha Nam Kirtan Bhagavat Shravan and then Mathura Vasa. Mathura Vasa. Where do we want to spend our days? We are living entities and we, are, we have free will so we can choose where we want to be. Of course, our karmic circumstances may need some adjusting sometimes. Mm. Mm. But uh, if we want to be in the most auspicious place for executing pure bhakti, we have to be in the dham, maturavas. Maturavas means to reside in the holy dham. That can apply also to Navadvip dham and also to Jagannath Puri. These three dhams are the three dhams of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Radha and Krishna. So, what do we do if we can't go physically to those dhams and reside there? Well, we have to be there internally in our sadhana. We have to be meditating upon the personalities, the dham itself, the Srimad Bhagavatam, the descriptions of Krishna's dham, Krishna's leela, pastimes, uh, Nam, Guna, Rupa, Lila, uh, Parikar, all of those things we have to be absorbed in. So Matura Vasa 
is the fourth principle out of all the 64 principles. And then finally comes Sri Murtir Shraddhaya Sevam. To have a relationship with Krishna in his Sri Murti, in his deity form, Archa Vigraha, to serve his deity form. How to serve? With faith. Shraddhaya Sevam. Great faith. So these are the five of all the 64. Huh? And these, these should be done continually in our spiritual life along with the other uh, 59 of the other 59. So 64 total. Yeah, so in his pure state, the living entity has no relationship with Maya. There, in the spiritual world, all the living entities' association is spiritual, and therefore, he only desires the association of those who have attained that platform. Right? The bridge buses, they're associating eternally with the most exalted personalities in the whole creation. Right? And we want to go there. Huh? We want to go there. Prabhupada told, back to our home. Back to home, back to Godhead, the eternal home of the Jiva. So, the, the association, yes, the living entity's association in the conditioned state is contaminated. That association being polluted with ignorance in the form of association with non-devotees the association of women, attachment to some scars and attachment to wealth, it is a hindrance for the living entity who is on the path of auspiciousness. So spiritual association, that's called chit sangha, spiritual association, it is actually like-minded association. We went over this yesterday, svajatiya, svajatiya sangha. So, spiritual association, if we want spiritual association, chit sangha, then we have to always associate with svajatiya, like-minded association of personalities who have the same goal in their life as we do. Right? Uh, that's why we become happy when we have god brothers and god sisters and our our seniors and juniors and all, all together doing kirtan, just like here in New Brudge. Uh, we have this opportunity so amply available. Uh, and it's a very blissful life and a very purified life. Uh, so, yeah, spiritual association is like-minded association for the living entities. And the mundane association, which is called Achit Sangha, it is incompatible association, Pijatiya Sangha. The living entity's liberation is freedom from this incompatible association. The living entity's liberation is actually freedom from this incompatible association. So we will now discuss incompatible association. Yesterday, we went over this section, the association of non-devotees, and how jnanis are non-devotees, right? So we're not going to repeat that. And how karmis are also non-devotees. Those who work solely for the fruit of their action are also non-devotees. Now, Oh, yesterday we ended with the category of yogis and worshippers of demigods and demigoddesses, logicians, sense enjoyers, and other such persons are all non-devotees. And by associating with these types of non-devotees, a person's intelligence is very quickly polluted. And all their bad qualities enter in. 
Mm. Gurudev always used to say that association is like a bridge. Mm. If you're associating, then their qualities come into you. Prabhupada used to say, remember, if you associate with a drunkard, mm -hmm. <laughs> you become a drunkard. So now, if anyone truly desires to attain bhakti, he should certainly give up the bad association of non-devotees. So that covers it. Now, we're continuing the second type of sangha, uh, association with women. Now, in parentheses, it says here, for renunciants. The association of women for renunciants is extremely harmful. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he instructed Sri Sanatana Goswami. Here's the famous verse. Asat Sangatyag e Vaishnava Achar. Stri Sangi ek asadu Krishna Abhakta Ar. Here in one verse, Mahaprabhu is describing how you can identify who is a Vaishnava. How does a Vaishnava behave? And here Mahaprabhu is saying, it is the custom of the Vaishnavas to give up asat sangha, bad association. E Vaishnava char, asat sangha tyag, to give that up. And then he, uh, spe he specifies that stri sangi, we all know what stri sangi is, yes? Stri means woman. The word stri in Sanskrit means woman. Stri sangi means one who is attached to associating with women for material sense enjoyment. It'll go into a lot of detail here. So Mahaprabhu is saying stri sangi ek asadu. This is one of the types of non-sadhus, is a stri sangi. And Krishna abhakta ar, the second type is a abhakta, a non-bhakta of Krishna. So we were already discussing how there are so many different types of non-devotees. So it is the custom of Vaishnavas to give up bad association. <clears throat> Those who associate illicitly with women are one type of unsaintly person. And the non-devotees are another. Now, there are two types of Vaishnavas, two types of Vaishnavas, householders, grihastas, and renunciants, tyagis. Because in the Varnashram system, there's four uh, ashramas, right? Four. What are they? Brahmachari, grihasta, vanapasta, and sannyas. And of those, three of them are practicing renunciation. And the Vaishnava householder is also practicing renunciation, uh, but it is done in a regulated fashion. His, his dharma uh, requires him to act in a particular way within uh, this material world with various responsibilities. So, renunciants are forbidden to speak with any woman whatsoever. Now, we're, we're all going to be wondering about this one, because there's finer points to understand. But Mahaprabhu showed the ultimate judgment on this. So, as Sriman Mahaprabhu says, this is another verse spoken by Mahaprabhu, Kshudra Jeev sab markat vairagya koriya. Indriya charaya gule prakriti sambhashya. This means those immoral persons whose renunciation is like that of monkeys, they simply wander around satisfying their senses and intimately conversing with women. Now the Lord's behavior with Vaishnavi women is ideal for tyag, tyagis. How is that? Anjalila, 1242, uh, describing Mahaprabhu's behavior. Purvavat koila prabhu sabar milan stri sab dur hoite koila prabhur darshan. 
Just as he had previously done, the Lord received all those who had traveled to Puri, because so many of his Vaishnava, especially Grihasta householders, they came from Puri, uh, from Bengal to Puri every year, and Mahaprabhu would greet them. But how he received all of them, and the women beheld him from a distance. You see? So, now, associating with women for householders. The regulations in regard to householder Vaishnavas is that they should not associate with prostitutes or with women other than their own wife. And they are not to associate with their wife in a way that transgresses the regulations of Scripture. They must, in every way, give up attachment and submissiveness to their wives. Should not be submissive to the wife. In every way, they should give up attachment and submissiveness to their wives. Now, in relation to smartas, smriti, those who observe the regulations of the smritis, the scriptures have instructed, here's a verse, na griham, griham ityahur, grihini griham uchite, tayahi sahita sarvan purushartan Samashnute. <clears throat> it is said that a house itself is not a home. We also have that in our English language, right? It is said that a house itself it is not a home. A house is called a home when a wife is in it. Huh? With her, a householder can engage in attaining all the goals of human life. What are the goals? Dharma, Artha, Kam, and Moksha. So, that verse is being quoted, and now Bhaktivinoda Thakur, who showed the topmost example, no one can compare with Bhaktivinoda Thakur's Grihasta life. Huh? So now he's explaining, having a wife is necessary for a householder. With the help of his wife, <clears throat> a householder is to perform activities meant for fulfilling the goal of human life, which is called purusharta, the goal of human life, which for people in general is fourfold. Dharma, religiosity, artha, economic development, kam, sense gratification, and moksha, liberation. The directives related to Varnashram that are mentioned in the scriptures are called dharma. And whatever is prohibited is called a dharma. Now with the help of his wife, a householder follows the rules and regulations of the scriptures and gives up that which they prohibit. The fruit achieved by following dharma is called artha. Money, food, progeny, and cows, they are all artha. The desire to enjoy artha is known as kam. Dharma, artha, and kam are together known as trivarga. Right? That's what everybody is trying to attain in this world. So while wandering in the cycle of karma, the living entity considers the attachment of trivarga to be the ultimate goal of life. Huh? Trivarga is his very life blood. Huh? It is the duty of the smarta householder to attain Trivarga with his wife. Day and night, a householder should perform activities directed at attaining Trivarga with his wife. A person's wife can accompany him while visiting holy places. As long as a taste for spiritual attainments does not arise in a person's heart, then how can he practice pure dharma, which is separate from trivarga? Here we go. Pure dharma is separate from trivarga. Liberation, moksha, is the living entity's fourth goal of life, purusharta. There are two types of liberation. First type, 
is the cessation of extreme distress by which one is completely freed from all kinds of suffering. That's the first type of liberation. And the second type is the attainment of spiritual happiness by which one is not only completely freed from all kinds of distress, but also attains spiritual happiness. So the ultimate goal for dry jnanis or mayavadis is the cessation of extreme distress. And for the purified jnanis, that means the devotees, it is the attainment of spiritual happiness. That devotee, he may either be a householder or a renunciant. In this case, they're the same. So a householder Vaishnava should perform spiritual practice with his wife for the purpose of attaining spiritual happiness. Although engaged in such activities, he never becomes dominated by his wife. Here we go. Again, although engaged in such activities, he never becomes dominated by his wife. In this way, throughout his life, the fault of associating with women can never be attributed to him because he doesn't become dominated. He should completely give up both unrestrictedly conversing with women, this is the householder Vaishnava, conversing with women unrestrictedly, and also he should give up his mundane mood of submission that results from fondness for his lawful wife. I know that we have very experienced householder Vaishnavas huh, in this room who could lecture on this from realization. Right? So, just a couple more minutes. Quarter after, we'll, yeah, uh, yeah, quarter after okay, we'll finish. So here now, Srila Shila Bhaktivinoda Thakur, he's quoting from the Srimad Bhagavatam, and he's, this is a, a deep analysis, which we'll get into much more tomorrow. But he's quoting from the first canto, chapter 2, verses 9 and 10, and then also 13 and 14. So that second chapter, you know, of Bhagavatam is so important to understand each and every verse. Gurudev said this is the summary of the whole Srimad Bhagavatam, actually. Second chapter of first canto. Dharma Syahiya Pavargasya Nartor Tayo Upakalpate Nartarsya Dharmai Kantasya Kamula Bayahi Smitaha. We'll read these verses tomorrow. But in the above verses, in these verses, Bhakti no Thakur is saying, it is mentioned that Tri Varga is the only Dharma of those who possess the qualification to perform karma. Dharma Artakam, Tri Varga. That's their only qualification. And those who have become detached from this world, which is pervaded with karma, its pleasures and the pleasures found in the heavenly planets, headed by Svarga, they obtain the qualification to perform Gyan. And for them, the rules and the regulations of the path of karma are unnecessary. Such persons are beyond the boundaries set for those who possess the qualification to perform only karma. They are eligible for sannyas that is characterized by dry gyan. So not for the Vaishnav sannyas. Anyway, this is complex. So we'll, we'll study this tomorrow and we'll try to go deep into these verses of the Bhagavatam. We'll read from Prabhupada's Bhagavatam and understand there's actually uh, four verses being quoted here. And then we'll really go deeply into understanding dharma and what kind of dharma should be performed. Okay, Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur Ki Jai, Sri Upadesha Britam Ki Jai, Jai Sri Rupa Goswami Pada Ki Jai, Sachinanda Gaur Hari Ki Jai, Sri Nityananda Prabhu Ki Jai, Sri Panchatakta Ki Jai, Sri Sri Radha Govinda Ki Jai, Nitai Gaur Premanam.